this is the new turn NBD. NBD stands for new bike day. It's not my new bike day. This actually is a bike that I got for my wife, but I guess it could also stand for like no big deal. I kind of like the no big deal sort of <laughs> vibe. It's just like, it's not a big deal to get on the bike and ride. Like some bikes, it's kind of a big deal. You know, you got to put your whole get up, special shoes, all that sort of thing. This bike is just like hop on and go. It's got a really easy entry. It's made for shorter riders. That's part of the reason why I chose it for my wife. And by the way, Tara, who's in a lot of the videos, not my wife. Just want to get that out of the way. We can clarify that. I think it's the type of bike that's made for people that really want to just get out and enjoy and not really like think about riding the bike. I had my wife try a lot of different bikes. Kind of is like a little shaky on all of them, quite frankly. I hope she doesn't mind me talking about her like this, but it's just the reality. And actually, I think there's a lot of people that are out there like that. Part of it is like, how well does the bike fit you? This bike's kind of universal, so it can fit many riders. It can fit a rider from four foot 10 to six foot four or so. It's got this extended seat post. You got plenty of length to go with this. This is as high up as it goes. The seat post has suspension as well, which is really nice. So. I got it pretty tight right now. You can adjust that just on the bottom here. I think it's like a 10 millimeter nut at the bottom. So if you tighten it, it's gonna be tighter. You have the adjustment here with the seat post and then you also have this adjustment with the handlebars as well. So you can just flip these levers open and you could get it into whatever position that you want. So you're a bit of a taller rider, you wanna be a bit more upright, you're here if you wanna be a bit more sporty, you can drop it down here. It's quite common that when you get a bike like this, it's a big investment and it's nice to be able to share it with others. I think this is a good type of bike to have in the house and allow many different people to ride, potentially even kids. You know, a lot of times kids are shorter, but then they're gonna grow, so you don't wanna get a small bike and then later you need a big bike for them. They say it's their most accessible bike yet. This really low and wide entry really helps. Beyond that, you can see that the geometry of the bike, the pedals are a little bit more forward and this gives you a little bit more of a relaxed position, but with this design, you can have a longer pedal stroke, but have a shorter distance to the ground. It's really beneficial. Maybe people don't have the same balance, wanna have an easier time to put their feet on the ground. I know you guys like to comment about people's seat being too low, but don't judge people, leave them alone. If they're happy with that, it's okay. They got an e-bike, they can afford to have the seat a little lower. Not a big deal. No big deal. You get it? <laughs> All right. So I really appreciate these kind of more accessible features, having the smaller wheels, lower center of gravity. You know, we've got pretty wide tires on here. That's gonna add to the comfort as well. Real wide pedals on here, comfortable pedals, pedals that not gonna scrape up your shin if you make a mistake. This particular one has a belt drive on it. It's also available with the chain drive, two different internal hubs. This is the Inter 5, which some people think that the eight speed is better than the five speed, but the reality is the five speed is a more premium hub by Shimano made specifically for e-bikes, made for higher torque applications like this performance line motor on here with 65 Newton meters of torque, that, that hub can handle it. But one of the features that you'll find on most turn bikes is it also has this ability to store even more compact. You can see naturally it's a smaller bike, but you can also store it up on its rear just like this. So there's little feet on the back of the rack here and you can store it just like that. From here you can also fold down the handlebars and you can really get into a pretty compact position. If you want to put it in the back of a vehicle, store it in a closet, you got all sorts of different options. So on this bike, as with most turn bikes, you'll find the smaller wheels. This tire on here is a 20 inch by 2.15. So although it's a small wheel, it has a relatively wide tire. And I think that really helps to give a good amount of comfort to the bike and really add to the suspension a little bit. Now you'll notice it doesn't have a suspension fork, but because you're sitting a bit more upright with the suspension seat post, the bike is still very comfortable. You could ride the tires at a little bit lower pressure if you wanted to add to the suspension element. Or they're what's called balloon tires and they're kind of built for that purpose. This bike, the S5i, has the big bend tires where the P8i has a slightly slicker tread to it with the big apple tires. You have fenders set up on the bike, front and rear. You also have this really nice mounting system. So you can mount a front rack on there. You can also mount this luggage truss system and you can add bags, baskets, all different sort of things. So really nice way to maximize the carrying capabilities of it. Let's check out the transmission on the rear of the bike. 
So coming around to the back of the bike, you can see the internally geared hub paired with the Gates carbon belt drive. Really nice to keep very low maintenance. You have everything kind of contained inside here. Really easy to use. You can shift from a standstill, which is really beneficial with that belt drive. You don't have to worry about cleaning and lubing it. I mean, you, you do have to just occasionally wipe it down, but for the most part, it's really worry-free. So the S5i comes with the belt drive and then the P8i comes with the chain drive and the eight-speed Nexus hub. Again, just a little reminder not to get too confused about the numbers because most people think it's eight is better than five, but actually this five speed is made specifically to handle higher torque applications with this more powerful motor. Eight speed, still a great internal hub. It just can't handle the power that this performance line motor puts out. Coming over to the motor, you can see it's hidden pretty well behind this guard. Historically, I would call this a chain guard, but in this case, it's covering a belt. So maybe it's a belt guard. But underneath here, you have the belt, and inside that belt, there's carbon strands, so it's really strong. But you have this extra protection. Maybe somebody's wearing a dress or something like that, or some nice pants, and you didn't want to worry about them getting dirty. Really nice protection there. Really nice, wide plastic pedals. Very comfortable, nice grip on there. You could see that really low step. You have some extra frame protection here. You're gonna step through here a lot. Maybe you end up scratching that or something like that. You don't really have to worry because it's got this nice, extra thick plastic cover here. Both of the NBD models have the Bosch motor system. This model, the S5i, has the performance line motor with 65 Newton meters of torque. And the P8i has the active line plus motor with 50 Newton meters of torque. And the torque really is how we usually measure power. A lot of companies really focus on the wattage, but I think the torque is really where you feel the power most and where you experience it and what really is gonna help you up those hills. So if you got really big hills, definitely good thing to consider with the performance line motor. If you wanna be a little bit more active with that active line plus on the P8i, that'll work just fine as well. All the Bosch motors use a technology called pedal assist, and basically it provides assistance as you pedal. Now you can ride it with no assistance, and it's pretty much just like a non-electric bike, but as you go up through the different modes, it's gonna change the assistance level, and it's also gonna change the range that you get out of the bike. Starting out, you get about 50% assistance in the eco mode and upwards of 300% in that top turbo mode. And with that, your range is gonna vary as well. You see anywhere from around 25, 30 miles on that 500 watt hour battery to upwards of 60, 70 miles in the lower levels of assistance. And then you see very slightly less with that 400 watt hour battery. Not that much of a difference though, because it's paired with that slightly less powerful motor. But Bosch also has a really cool range calculator on their website, which you can get a good sense of how the range will vary depending on your riding conditions. But one of the things I find with the Bosch system, it performs really best in class here with the pedal assist. I will note that not all pedal assist is created equal. The Bosch system, in my experience, really is some of the best out there. And it mainly comes down to the way the sensors work and how they actually control the assist based on those sensors. So inside the motor, there's a sensor that's sensing how hard you're pedaling. There's another that's sensing how fast you're pedaling. And then overall, they're sensing how fast the bike's going. And based on that information, they're taking a thousand senses per second and really providing a seamless experience with your pedaling. I like to explain it that it just kind of makes you feel more powerful than you are. I wonder if you tried it yourself. Maybe you can put a comment, let people know what your experience is with it. All right, Tara told me this is the time in the video that I'm supposed to tell you to like, comment, and subscribe to the video. So can you maybe appease her and do that? She'll really appreciate it. I'll appreciate it too, but you know, we're just having fun here. So uh, let's keep it going. So you see this little key hanging here. This is actually a lock for the bike. It locks the rear wheel. So you just turn the key, make sure you're not gonna hit a spoke there, just rotate it a little bit. And now the, the rear wheel is locked. You can actually use this in conjunction with the chain. It's actually the same key that we used for the battery as well. So we could just insert this here rotate that and we can remove the battery here. S5i comes with a 500 watt hour battery and the P8i comes with a 400 watt hour battery. Now you can see on the underside, you can charge it through this port here. Alternatively, you can also charge it while it's on the bike through the port uh, just down here. Whenever you insert the battery again, you wanna have really hear that click. That, that's the way you know that it's, it's fully secure there. When it's unlocked, the key needs to be inside here. If you wanna 
remove the key, you have to actually lock the bike. And you can see we have some really nice, comfortable Ergon grips on here. We have the Bosch and Tuvia display, which I think is well fitting for this. Really large, easy to read. If you just turn it on by tapping this button here, you know that it's on when it has a 0.0, .0 miles per hour. This shows you your max speed. You can cycle through all sorts of different information. The average speed, the trip time, the range. You can see the range change as you change into the different assistance levels. The range will update from there. So, you know, you have the top level of turbo. Right now it's showing 17 miles. Probably with the full charge, you're at more 25, 30 miles, but you have the odometer. As you can see, the bike's pretty new. And then the, the trip distance. Right now we haven't reset all, any of this, but if you hold this down for a couple of seconds, it will reset all these uh, little details. Other details, you have the light on here. You can just tap this button here and you can turn the light on. This is gonna give power to the light, but the light will be off if it's on this switch here. So you can switch it on and off. As you change to the different assist levels, you're gonna change the percentage of assistance the bike will provide. So in the first level of Eco, it's gonna give about a 50% boost. Here's 100, 200, and about 300% in turbo mode. I like to think of it in rudimentary terms that basically Basically, you take one pedal revolution and the bike is taking three on top. So, I mean, the thing that I really like about it is you, you kind of don't have to think about it. You just ride it and it just works. So, one other little detail, uh, you can remove the display. You can still turn it on when it's not connected. This is also what you'll see if you ever had a connection issue. Maybe it's not seated on all the way. You won't see the 0.0, .0 miles per hour. This is the gear shifter. So if you twist it towards you, you can go into the lower gear, starting at one, two, three, four, five. You can change the gears when you're not pedaling, which is kind of nice. One thing I generally recommend not pedaling hard or like trying to change gears when you're pedaling. It's ideal just to like let off your pedaling slightly and you have a nice little bell here. And this model, the S5i has the Magura MT4 brakes, really easy to use. The P8i is gonna have the Shimano brakes, bolt grate brakes, hydraulic disc brakes, and really a nice pairing for these bikes. You can actually adjust the lever reach. So if you want, you can just basically use this little bolt here and you could pull the lever a little bit closer to you. Or if you have really big hands, you wanna move it a further away, that's also possible. But, and here you can see the brakes. These are the Magora MT4 dual piston calipers. Same front and rear, 160 millimeter rotor. Really plenty for this application. And you'll see a, a similar setup for the P8i, but it's gonna use the Shimano braking system. You could also see down here, this is the speed sensor as well as the kickstand. You do have the option to go to a center mounted kickstand on here as well. That's one of the nice things about the turn bikes overall is all the different options that you have to upgrade and adjust it to your own specific needs. You also have a really heavy duty rack on the back here. So this is rated for 27 kilograms or about 59 and a half pounds. Well suited to carry a child seat back here. It's got some mounting holes. So if you wanted to put maybe a basket and secure it here, you can do that. You can see it comes with these elastic straps here, a little bungee cord. And you can strap different things on the rack and set it up in different configurations, how, however you like. I kind of got it set up in a weird way right now, but. And then you also have these little mounts here. You could put a pannier on the lower portion and then you could put a basket up top really capable of holding quite a bit. Many racks out there, you'll see they're only rated for like 30, 40 pounds. So it's nice to see a rack that's capable of doing more, especially if you wanna put a child seat on there, which I think a lot of people might choose this bike to, to carry a kid on the back. If you wanted to carry more kids or bigger kids, you could also choose the HSD, the GSD, or, or maybe the Quick Haul. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I really am enjoying this bike and I'm excited to see how it does long-term. This bike's gonna be living in our family for a little while. This is uh, Soraya's personal bike. Uh, maybe I'll update you in the future with more of the extended review, but so far so good. We went out for a couple little rides. She's really enjoying it. It, it fits her well. I think a lot of people are really gonna like this. I encourage you to give one a shot and see how you like it. Enjoy doing this with you guys and see you next time.